if you're in a toxic relationship, there are days where you just don't know up from down, left to right, what's okay, what's not okay. It's just a hot mess. And if you experience that, you know what I'm talking about. And if you got out of it, fantastic. So happy for you. But I have to tell you that just because you're out of it doesn't mean that junk doesn't still come up. So today I'm going to be talking about some factors that keep you stuck in the relationship and also keep you ruminating. Things that just spin over and over and over in your mind and you're just like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? And so this video is for you and it's also for people that are still stuck and caught in a toxic dynamic. Important stuff, guys. Don't miss it. All right then? Cool. So pay attention. I know I say that all the time, but you know, I used to be a teacher, so forgive me. <laughs> My name is Keisha Martine and I'm a licensed therapist and if you're new to the channel, hi and hola. On this channel, I do my best to give you guys some tools, information, all things to help you in your journey of self-discovery and healing and all the things. And occasionally, I like to toss in a little bit of humor in there <laughs> because humor can really help us digest the hard stuff a little bit better. So subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Right then, moving on. Now, in a previous video, I talked about projective identification of fleas. So I'm gonna expand on projective identification today because that is a very key point that oftentimes blurs the line between victim and abuser. That's what keeps you on that hamster wheel. So now that you know what's going on, let's get to it. What is projective identification? We're all familiar with projection, right? where someone projects onto you their bad behavior or what they're thinking, what they would do, all the things, right? Well, projective identification is a little more involved than that. I'm hoping by me defining this for you, it helps give you some objectivity when you look back about what's happened in the past or maybe what you're going through right now. So projective identification is when someone projects all of their unacceptable qualities, things they don't like about themselves on another person. And then that person who's receiving that projection internalizes those qualities and believes himself or herself to be characterized by them appropriately and justifiably. So it's pretty icky, right? So I know that kind of jargon is kind of confusing and it's hard to wrap your mind around. And basically the way I like to explain it is that if you're a reflective individual, you understand that you have things you have to work on, things you don't like about yourself, that you make efforts to change. And when you're in a toxic dynamic, those are the areas in which a toxic person, intentionally or unintentionally, might play on to make you feel bad about yourself. So what does this have to do with that blurred line between victim and abuser? Well, usually the difference between a victim and an abuser is that a victim can be reflective, own their behavior, feel remorse for their behavior, and try to bend over backwards to see that other person's perspective and to try, like hell, to please that person and take all the responsibility for all the things that are going wrong. And as we know, that is just not the case. It takes two. Two. Let's say you do something wrong. Let's say that you snap, you finally snap after the toxic dynamic and the abuse and all things and you just lose your cool and you exhibit those behaviors that that person constantly demonstrates towards you, okay? And they're constantly gonna remind you of that one or two times where you weren't super compassionate and patient and empathetic and tolerating their nonsense and you finally just snap. And the person that is toxic, the person that is the abusive person, is never gonna let you live that down, ever. To keep you under their thumb, to keep you trying to prove over and over and over again how much you care, validate their existence, make them feel good about themselves by completely trampling all over you. And it's just not cool, all right? Because you're reflective and because you're trying to work on yourself and all things, you really do internalize what that person is saying or accusing you of, right? And you're like, oh my God, maybe maybe they're right. Yeah, I, okay, yeah, I do do that sometimes. Yeah, I was kind of a jerk that one time at band camp. So yeah, I was kind of a jerk that one time when that person did the thing and I lost control and so they're right. I do have these bad qualities. As you can see, accepting those qualities, believing those qualities, feeling bad about yourself for having those qualities, and believing that all of those things are true that they're telling you is gonna make you feel like, oh man, 
maybe I am the jerk here. Maybe I am the one that's abusive. Maybe I am the one that's not treating that person well. And if you've been in that situation, you know how much you're constantly questioning your reality. Did I do the thing? Did I say the thing? Was that really how it came out? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you find yourself in the twilight zone in your own mind. Yeah. If you missed that other one, go check it out. You know what I'm talking about. So a couple other things I want to get to about distinguishing the line between victim and abuser, okay? But before I do, if you have experiences or you've found this pattern occurring in your behavior in the past or what have you, and you know what I'm talking about, leave it down in the comments. Okay. Sharing stories helps you feel less isolated, can help you get out of your own head, can help put things in perspective. So if you've been there, let us know right then. So back to what I was saying, why this can keep you stuck in a relationship. Well, all right, I had to take off my sweater because the light is making me hot. So back to the blurred lines. If you're still feeling remorse, guilt, shame for those behaviors, you are likely not the one who was abusive, okay? It's a person's compassion and empathy for other people that distinguishes between the victim and abuser, okay? I'll give you an example, one in which I've experienced. Someone actually said that I was sensitive about things when they happened to me, but not when it had to do with other people. Yeah. I actually heard that. And you know what? I believed it. And you know the reason why I believed it is because I am a sensitive person. And so that caused me to doubt myself. And I even believed that, well, maybe that person's right. Maybe I'm not being sensitive enough to other people. And so what did I do? I did more and more and more. And I ignored my boundaries because I thought maybe I was selfish and oftentimes apologize for that other person's behavior towards me because I wasn't being sensitive enough to that person. Yeah, it's a pretty crappy feeling, especially when you care about people, especially when you really love and adore that person and you can see all their qualities and you value that person in your life. And so really try to be aware of that and be mindful of that. What are the qualities that you know are true about yourself that you value in yourself and you value in other people. And if that person is causing you to question those values, question if that's really a trait that you own, it's probably not a good situation. And it could be that person trying to keep you under their thumb, keep you feeling less than, keep you questioning your worth, keep you questioning how good you are, all the things, right? Okay, something else that can distinguish the victim between the abuser is the victim oftentimes will underreport the abusive behavior of the other person. And so a victim might say in passing things here and there about the other person and how they've been treated by them, but it's underreported, meaning that they don't talk about it often or they minimize it because they're taking blame for the other person's behavior. And so they might feel ashamed of what's going on because they feel like they're the cause of it. Okay, so that's another distinguishing factor between victim and abuser. Also, oftentimes victims will not label what they're going through as abuse. They'll describe how that person's acting or how they're treating them in sympathetic terms. Like, oh, they're just going through a lot right now. Maybe they're not seeing things clearly and I need to be, again, more patient, sensitive to what they're going through, all the things. So that's another distinguishing factor to be mindful of. So I mentioned how projection is typically defined by a person who's projecting all the things that are un unacceptable onto someone else, okay? Which is true, but it can also go the other way around, right? If you're a good person, you have a good heart, you value people, you see their beauty, all the lovely things, you can project your qualities onto someone else. You might have a tendency to overlook all the other icky stuff and focus purely on the good things that you see in this person. It's important to distinguish when a behavior is an exception and when a behavior is a rule, okay? Right, that's another thing that can help you distinguish between being a victim and an abuser, okay? An abuser doing something nice for someone or a toxic person doing something nice for someone occasionally is an exception, right? It's not the general rule. It's not something that you see all the time. 
all right? So look over time, be honest with yourself. I know you might really wanna see the good in people because it's something you value and it's something that you want, right? But not everybody is like you. And I know that that can be a hard pill to swallow. So just be mindful of that and how that could be a factor in how you're making excuses for this person, okay? Let me clarify what I've talked about so far because I know I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent. So a victim will likely underreport the partner, friend, family member's abusive behavior. They may not label what's happening as abuse. They blame themselves for what's going on. They may even express feeling sorry for that person because of their background or whatever. They oftentimes make excuses for their behavior. They bend over backwards to see that person's perspective. And they, and they typically exhibit a lot of self-doubt. Okay, so if that describes you, then I hope that that helps you look at things a little bit differently. And if this is resonating with you, you know I'm gonna say, okay? Go talk to a therapist as soon as you can, just sort through this stuff, all right? Okay then. So now that I've clarified some qualities that likely describe the victim in these dynamics, I'm gonna move on to the other side of things, okay? Basically, a lot of the characteristics I just described in victims is pretty much the opposite in the abusive person or the toxic person. So a toxic person, abusive person tends to underreport, justify, or rationalize their abusive behavior, okay? So the victim does the opposite, right? They tend to underreport what's happening and all things, right? So that's a distinguishing factor. Also number two, they describe themselves as the victim, whereas the victim doesn't see it as abuse in the first place, okay? Also, the abuser will oftentimes feel abused when the other person doesn't go along with them, doesn't agree with them, says no to them, or they don't do what, what they want. Typically because they feel entitled, right? They don't see you as someone outside of themselves or don't recognize your needs or wants or all the things, right? You're an extension of them, so you just need to be bending over backwards, like I said, be at their beck and call, all the things, okay? Another distinguishing factor. Okay, and another thing that they'll tend to do is also pathologize your behavior or your reaction to their mistreatment, okay? You're crazy, you are up and down, I, I don't ever know what I'm gonna get from you, I feel off kilter around you, I can't talk about these things with you because this is how you react, okay? That's nonsense, all right? And you don't deserve that. And if that's something that's happened to you, then I would encourage you to reflect on your worth, reflect on your value, think about your other relationships. If this is not present in other relationships, then we know what the answer is and there's no blurred line, okay? Also, they may not demonstrate compassion or empathy for other people. Not to say that it doesn't come out occasionally where you're like, oh, I'm seeing some understanding here. Careful because that can keep you sucked in, all right? If all of these other patterns, characteristics, behaviors are consistent over time, and just a few times you see that person empathize, doesn't make all this other nonsense okay, all right? So going back to what I was talking about earlier in my experience, right, being accused of not being sensitive enough to other people, perhaps that was a projection, right? And so that could be another reason that you might be minimizing, ignoring, making excuses for because of that one time or two times that that person apologized or empathized, just saying. So they show little compassion on things, right? And something that can be an indicator to that is their inability to really describe another person's perspective on what's going on or the dynamic between the two or maybe even a conflict that happened. It's really hard for them to see and describe what that other person may have been experiencing. So take a look at that. So if this person talks a lot about other people and, oh, I can't believe they did this to me and how they're treating me and me, 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 right? But they don't stop to think, well, maybe they're behaving this way because of blah, 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 blah. Big distinguishing factor between someone who is the victim and the abused. Now, I'm not trying to shame or blame the victim by any means whatsoever about staying in the relationship. This is just me offering clarity as to why you might be stuck or you might have been stuck in the relationship. It's not your fault if you weren't aware of these things. 
And so there's some beauty in coming out of that situation, right? Because then you can reflect on what happened. You can reflect on what led you to be vulnerable in the first place. And you can learn how to strengthen yourself so that you don't find yourself in that same situation later. All right? So just know it's not your fault. Okay? And remember, in case you don't know it, that you're loved. All right? Okay, so here's another one to think about. And I mentioned this in one of my last videos is self-righteousness. They just exhibit self-righteousness. They are holier than thou. They are above all else. They are the end all be all and can be pretty haughty and obnoxious and arrogant. So yeah, that's just, you know, not to say that other people that are good people that aren't toxic people aren't that way sometimes, but again, consistency across the board. I hope this gives you some more clarity on those blurred lines between victim and abuser. And if you identify with a lot of the characteristics of a person that is a victim, know that there is help and there is treatment and there are things that you can do to recover, empower yourself and survive and to come out the other end and thrive and find the best version of yourself and all the things. And I certainly do hope that you are able to do that. And if you need help, again, I'm going to tell you to go talk to a therapist. All right, life coach, whatever. Also, you've got to educate and keep educating yourself about this kind of stuff. All right, now, if you're watching this video and you're identifying a lot with the other side of things, all right, fear not, okay? You can too also try to change these patterns. You know, if this is causing you to become more aware, good, that's good. That means that change is possible. That means that you can work on yourself and all the things. And I know it might be hard to digest if you're hearing this stuff and you're like, oh man, that sounds just like me. Ask for forgiveness, forgive yourself, and go get help, all right? If you recognize that you are currently in a situation like this and you need help, there are resources out there available if you can't go talk to a therapist. And I will put those resources down in the description. Don't worry, it's free. It doesn't have anything to do with my services or anything like that. It's just for you to have some resources to help you find your way out of this mess. All right, so if you found today's content helpful and useful, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved.